Hold High to 4.5 was just announced today and the benchmarks are out and it does look really good on the benchmarks but as usual I don't really trust benchmarks so <laughs> I'm gonna try it out, out myself with a real world test by building a full stack app and also we'll be doing some debugging and to make it interesting I'm gonna compare it with a I would say a similar price model even though it's cheaper which is GLM 4.6 because it is a really good alternative to Sonnet. So we'll see how it goes head to head. Now we'll be using the Droid CLI from Factory AI. It does have a really good plan and free tier where you will have 20 million tokens and the usage goes if you are using the Droid Core, which is running on GLM 4.6, it the multiply will be 0.25, whereas on Haiku 4.5, it will be 0.4. So it is more expensive on the Haiku model, but we'll see if it is actually worth it. And yeah, I would say these are like the cheapest models on the plan right now. So yeah, it will be an interesting comparison. So we'll know which one has a better value, of course, for the cheap price. For the real world test itself, I am going to be building a full stack app where I will be using my typical workflow, which is a spec driven workflow. That is, I will do all the planning before building anything on with agents. Now for the planning, I'll be using Codespace which is free right now where you can have access to the tech spec creation and creating a repo from the starter kit. And also it will set up your project directory from the code space agent. Here's what we're going to be building. It is called everything AI. It's going to be an app where we can have access to all the chat models and different AI functions like image generation. And there's going to be a whole bunch of other features, but for now we'll start it out. And here's already a tech spec that was generated from code space. It made this based on my original initial prompt, which was this. It was very simple and it expanded it out into a whole text pack. As you can see, it even has details on the repo, which was using the starter kit, which is the code guide full stack starter kit, which is free. You can use it to create new apps. It's going to be in the link in the description. Along with the text pack, it has already generated the tasks where it will be a guideline for the agent, which in this case will be Droid CLI. So it doesn't lose track. So it doesn't so it always knows what to do next. So here's an example of one of the tasks. It already has key details, which is really nice. So it will definitely eliminate or at least decrease the hallucinations done by the AI. Since all the planning has been done already, now we can go ahead and get the repo and clone it to our local machine. Now, since I am using Codespace, it has already created a repo for me from the starter kit that I've chosen, which was the code guide starter full stack which comes with Next.js 15, Grizzle ORM and Postgres for the backend and database. And for the auth, it's going to be better auth and front end would be Shad CN with Tailwind, which is a very great combo. You can do everything in just the repo or in just your project directory. The AI can make your migrations, can create your database schema and just push it straight away to the data development database because it is built on Docker. So it has a very good development experience. Okay, to start, I'm just going to go back to the repo, but if you are going to be using the starter kit and not going to be using code space, you can just press this, use this template button. Now that what that will do is you'll be able to create a new repo based on that starter kit. Now, because I have already done so through code space, I can just press this button and we can just clone it to our local machine. And also since it was on, it was running on code space, the code space agent has actually already finished everything, but yeah, because we're going to be comparing it with the Droid CLI. I'm not going to be using this PR that it has made. Let's just clone that this repo to my local machine. Now I just use VS code for this. Um, you can just go ahead and click this button and yeah, press clone re repository and then just press this and then it'll automatically clone it and then actually open the repo or like the project itself. Now the next step is going to be implementing the docs and the tasks and also the text back to our new directory project directory in our local machine to implement the docs and tasks with the text pack, It's very easy. If you're using code space, you can just go to the code space and the task you are working on. And then you press this text pack button. There's going to be a download button for the text pack, but also you can just copy this command and paste it in your agent of choice. Actually, it's actually, it's not a command. It's a, it's a prompt, <laughs> but if you want to, you can do so manually with the commands. If not, I would just prefer using the prompt and just paste it in. It has everything you need to implement the docs and the tasks and the text spec on the local directory. Now here's the prompt. Now I just need to click enter. Now this is on Android with the Haiku 4.5 model, but yeah, I'm gonna just wait until this finishes and then I'll be duplicating this directory to have another one running on GLM 4.6 with the Droid core baseline plan from Droid. 
So Droid has implemented all the docs, all the tasks and the text pack onto my project directory. As you can see, it was just running a very simple set of instructions where it just downloads the documentation from the Codespace server via the API and the CLI. And then after that, it just adds all the tasks, which is now here. And, and then last but not least, the text pack is now here. So now I'll just create a new session by just picking, by just typing in new. All right, now it is resetted. Now this is using Haiku 4.5. Now I have made a separate directory with the same files. It is, yep, it's this one, and I'm gonna be using the GLM Droid Core, um, sorry, Droid, GLM 4.6 on the Droid Core base plan. And as you can see, it is on the 0.25 multiplier, whereas Haiku is on 0.4. So let me just switch that to GLM for now. Now for the next step would be, I'll write a, an instruction, a simple prompt to start everything. Here's the prompt. It's a very straightforward instruction, which is just to follow the tasks and refer to the text pack because yeah, because everything, the context is already there. So hopefully it will follow and have a really good understanding of the project. And yeah, let's just do the same prompt here on the Haiku model. Now let's start everything by clicking enter. There we go. And I'll press enter here. All right. Now we'll just wait and see until it finishes the first prompt. Then I'll give my first impressions on both results. Both models have finished completing the tasks. Now let's see how much time it actually took them. For Haiku 4.5, I used the medium thinking. It was running for six minutes and 40 seconds. Now for GLM 4.6, that is on the Droid Core baseline model, it is it was running for 12 minutes and 17 seconds. Now that's like twice the duration for GLM. But then again, if, you, if you've seen my previous tests, it could have been that um, one model does more testing, more refining and then the other. So we'll see how the results are actually, once we see the actual app and test it out. I have ran both development servers. So let's see my first impressions on the result of the first prompt. We'll start off with the one from uh, Haiku 4.5. So here's the one from Haiku 4.5. It is just using the dummy landing page, which is fine. It is the one from the starter kit. And we'll see the one on Droid Core, which is on DLM 4.6. So there is an error here. And it seems that it has deleted the, I guess, the utils, uh, utils function in the utils library, which is here. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just going to quickly fix this with the GLM 4.6 and yeah, see the results of the first prompt. Yeah, that was just a very quick fix. They just re-added the, the, the function they deleted before. Now let's see. Okay, it is running. This is the one on GLM. And this is the one, sorry, this, yeah, this is the one on Haiku 4.5 and then this is the one on GLM 4.6. Now, yeah, it's using the same starter kit landing page, which is fine because I didn't really specify any landing pages. I'll just try by signing up on both apps and see what the dashboard or the first page looks like. Both apps successfully were able to sign me up, but yeah, there is an issue on the one with Haiku model. Um, yeah, just, it's just an import error, I guess. Let's just try to fix that with another prompt on the Haiku 4.5 model. So let me just paste that in, fix this. Yeah, and then this is mostly how I debug and then there's several steps after if it doesn't work, <laughs> but we'll see. But yeah, if you see the GLM one, it is working and this is the dashboard. So we'll just wait for the Haiku model to finish this bug or this error and we'll continue on the comparison. Okay, that was a very quick fix. This is from Haiku 4.5. And yep, it is using the dummy sidebar, but yeah, it, the first page is the dashboard where we'll be able to see the analytics of our usage on different AI models and of course, different providers. Now let's see that on the GLM 4.6. Okay, so here it is. It is, I can see that there's less containers, less sections on the one on made by GLM 4.6. Whereas, yep, this is um, most, like it's such much more simpler, but um, I guess, yeah, there are a lot of differences between these two sections as you can see, but yeah, let's try continue on to the other functions of the app. I think this was a bit interesting coming from Haiku 4.5, where it does create an actions folder instead of having all the functions in one API route, like it did on the GLM model. As you can see, it made everything in the API route, whereas the one on Haiku 4.5, it separated out into a server actions folder and it has the server actions there which is, yeah, I think that's like noteworthy because I've never seen that actually from a model. Moving on to the next test, which is the chatting with the AI system. That's my typical test. Now we'll see on GLM, there is an issue here, there's an error. So let me just copy that stack trace. Now let us see the one on Haiku. It is working, as you can see, this is the chat page. 
but yep it, it should be fine so i'll just fix the one on glm first glm finished fixing the issue now we'll compare it head to head let's start with the one made by haiku 4.5 we'll just try it with a versatile prom hey there with this okay that's there's an error here it's a small bug <laughs> it's not actually returning the text string or like stream but let's see how it is on um, glm this is the one made by glm 4.6 let's see that so yep um wait let me check the options here i don't think it was updated let me check new okay yeah so these have a um a more updated models i guess because it has four row but it doesn't have it here so let's just try on gpt4 turbo let's see okay so there's an error here and yeah i'm just gonna double check what it is the issue has finally been resolved on the glm 4.6 with Droid. Now, I just want to point out there was a bit of an issue when I was debugging. I've done like a lot of problems on fixing that chat route, which had issues in like saving to the database and also the streaming mainly. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that's because it doesn't have like the knowledge of AI SDK version five. So it was just, you know, like reading all of these um, different types from the library to try it out. And it kind of like kind of failed. So what happened was it just stopped working. So I just had to always say continue to continue but then finally just return this for some reason so i just started a new session with droid and yeah he was able to fix it um pretty quick with the new sessions so i'm not sure what's that actually about but yeah i mean at least it's fixed now so when i give a chat like let's just try this from and yeah it should respond yep with a streaming capabilities now let's try the same on haiku which i had a better experience on with the chat let's see hey Yep, there is no loading animation, but the streaming works without errors on the first go. Uh, yeah, there was just a minor issue, but it's fixed. Now, as for the UI, this does look more organized. I mean, more like in place. But if you see, there are no options or like there are no like panels to go to different chats, which would be important. Now you can add a new chat, but yeah, you're not able to go back and see your previous chats. And it does have a system prompt here. Now let's check the one on. Yeah, this is on GLM. Now on GLM, it does have the sessions on the left side and you can add new chats like, um, which is also um, on the one with made by Haiku 4.5. Uh, but yeah, let's see if you can add system prompt. Oh, you can actually add system prompt. Okay, so the next test would be the web scraper, which is the function that I have defined in the text pack and it has been created by both Haiku 4.5 and also GLM 4.6. But yeah, overall, let's see just from the UI, the GLM 4.6 seems to have a pattern of like having two panels and having icons while messing up the actual like select um, trigger, which looks pretty funky. There's no padding here. There's no like spacing, but yeah, overall it is like looking better um, in terms of like styling, I guess. But yeah, it's just missing some points here. Um, and let's see the one on Haiku. Haiku 4.5 is very simple. It just has two two inputs for markdown and also for the URL. And then just scrap the page, scrape the page, and then just scrape the page. So let's try it out. Let's start from Haiku 4.5. So I'm just gonna take a yeah, probably just get yeah, use the factory's own website. Let's try that. Okay, let me just paste it in here. And and this is using Firecrawl. I checked the code. I have set the ENV and everything, so it should be good. Let's try it. scraping the page. Okay. It is returning an empty page <laughs> or an empty content. Um, but I'm not sure why that is. Could be the page is not being able to be scraped. But let's try the same on well, the scraper made by GLM 4.6. Let's try. Oh, actually, I was. A okay, so there is content here. That's interesting. But yeah, of course, it's messed up because of the, uh, you know, the styling of the theme, which is not on dark mode for some reason. But let's try if it is working fine here. Let's do that this is the one on glm 4.6 let's try it out so it is not returning any result which is interesting it seems that haiku is generating less errors but i'll i'll see if this can be fixed by glm 4.6 okay so it turns out that was actually a very quick fix from glm now this is the result on uh, the web scraper made from glm 4.6 as you can see it has more information than when comparing to the one on haiku so this is the one on Haiku 4.5. It does have um, these tab section where it shows the metadata and also some links. And where I don't, okay, it 
does have the details here, but the metadata is kind of here. So yeah, and then it's supposed to be showing, I guess, markdown here, but it's not. And instead, oh, actually no, that was uh, the, con the actual content. It's not on markdown formatting, uh, but yeah, they have a raw request or raw response from Firecrawl, uh, which is a bonus. And yeah, if you can, you can just copy this and there's no download button, but you can go to the page. All right. And whereas on Haiku, there is no, yeah, there's, there's only download and copy. So yeah, that's uh, the discrepancy. That's the difference uh, with the functions. In my opinion, both <laughs> model are kind of messed up with the UI, but there are more functionality, of course, with the GLM 4.6, because as you can see, you can go to the previous scrapes or like all the scrape, scraping sessions, whereas on Hyco 4.5 doesn't have that, and I'm not sure where you can go there. Uh, so I think that's they completely missed that function or that feature, which is a bummer. But overall, yeah, um, this UI, I would say, is better. But yeah, there's, there are issues on both of them, but yeah, um, at least it's... It's, it's less of an issue here on the one created by GLM 4.6. The final test, I will just be looking through the dashboard and reviewing it, like seeing the UI UX and also the data, if it is correctly fetched and everything is good. Uh, so first off, this is the one created by Haiku 4.5. As you can see, this is on port 3090. So yeah, it is very simple. There are no like major errors or issues. It is looking good. Okay, so this is actually where you can access the different sessions from the web scraping and the chats. But as you can see, there are no option to go to these pages or these sessions. So it's not able to retrieve the sessions. Um, so yeah, that's something that should be worked on because that's a major feature if you want to, of course, go to your previous sessions. Uh, but yeah, let's see. Uh, it has the charts here and a pie chart over here. And this should be a line chart, which is nice. And yeah, overall, it is very simple um, UI-wise and also the UX, but it is missing the major feature of returning to the sessions. But let's see the one made by GLM 4.6. So that's, this is the one. And yep, there are also charts and they do look, I guess, different. Like, yeah, um, and this is the line chart, which is the usage over time. And then these are the overview of all the, you know, sessions and tokens and total usage. As you can see, there are more, uh, boxes here, which means that there are more data, um, I guess, right? Yep, there is more. Uh, and it is dividing it into different categories, which is nice. Uh, and as shown here, instead of having it just on the chart. But yeah, I guess that's a bit redundant. Yep, this is this is actually like summarizing it a lot better, in my opinion. Uh, but let's see on the bottom here, there is a table and there is none here. It is only the recent activities. And am I able to go to these sessions? Nope, I'm not able to. But yeah, you can see the top models or whatever models I use and then the usage count, which is which means that it is all being inserted to the database properly, which is, of course, what we want. If we go to Drittle Studio, it is here. You can see the chat messages. You can see the the different chat sessions. That's good. Now, I would say it's the same here. Yeah, all the data is being fetched, and but it is using... Use, okay, now this is for, I would say, the tokens, right? Yeah, the tokens and the cost, which is great. It is being saved on DLM 4.6. I would say the UI is quite better here on GLM 4.6. So here's the cost usage of each models. This is the one on GLM 4.6. The first session used 685,000 tokens, which is a lot. Whereas the second session did only take 14.8 thousand tokens. Now I would note the majority of these tokens was because there was the issue that it couldn't solve with one prompt. So I had to do multiple prompts. I would say like three to four prompts just to fix that chat streaming issue. Here's the token usage of Haiku 4.5. It only used 319.6 thousand tokens. So what's the summary here? Um, I It was very unexpected. Haiku 4.5 did use way less tokens. It was only 319 K tokens, whereas Droid used up 600-ish K tokens, which is way more. And keep in mind, Droid core on GLM 4.6, the multiplier is only 0 0.25. So that's like a lot more tokens used in terms of just the raw tokens from the model. I would say if you are just wanting a very simple model to do very simple tasks, HiQ 4.5 is a very good option here. It was very cost efficient because of the, you know, less errors and also they do have less intuition in terms of like adding bells and whistles to your feature. Whereas Droid Core GLM 4.6 was able to stick to the specifications more, but it did use up more tokens because of the errors it were encountering. If you have any feedback or questions, just leave them in the comments below. And all the tools and starter kit that I used in this video, I will link in the description below. Thank you.